Hi, my name's Chris Malkin. I'm a cardiologist. I work in Leeds. Um, I have a major interest in interventional cardiology, and that includes uh, the investigation and treatment of patients with chest pain, particularly with coronary disease, and the investigation of treatment of patients with heart valve disease. I've been a consultant for just over 10 years now, and uh, my practice uh, has evolved in, in so many ways in the past 10 years. Uh, my principal expertise is with uh, PCI, which is coronary intervention with balloons and stents, and structural intervention, which is keyhole valve treatments, particularly to treat aortic valve stenosis and mitral valve repair. I see a lot of patients with chest pain, and it's a very uh, non-specific symptom that does require some assessment from an experienced doctor. Um, the, the type of chest pain that we genuinely worry about is so-called angina, which is pain from the heart due to narrowing or blockages in the coronary arteries that supply the heart with its blood supply. And this is the sort of pain that one can get when one is having a heart attack. Uh, but typically in patients who are more stable, it's transient chest pain caused on exertion. And that's the particular symptom that we look for. Does your pain get worse when you exercise and does it get better when you rest? There are lots of organs and uh, particular causes of chest pain in the chest. There's the lungs, there's the gullet, there's the stomach, there's the heart and the lining is all of those. And any one of these particular organs can become inflamed or irritated. So actually most of the patients that I see with chest pain don't have heart pain due to angina or an evolving heart attack. But often many of those patients do require investigations and treatments or to see an expert who can help them through it. Well, unfortunately, the heart is not terribly reliable at giving us an area where it feels pain. Um, if you read a textbook or you see a, a, an advert on the TV, people typically describe pain as just being on the left side of the chest, being constricting. It's often described as a tight or tight band across the chest. Um, and sometimes it uh, radiates towards the shoulder or towards the arm. But actually, many of the patients that I've seen coming in with heart attacks, for example, have pain that's not typical at all. Sometimes the pain is felt in the jaw or even the teeth. Occasionally the pain is felt in the tummy or the back. Occasionally people just have no pain whatsoever. And, and the symptom is just overwhelming breathlessness associated with sweating and a fast heart rate and feeling non-specifically unwell. Any serious or severe symptom that doesn't immediately improve requires potentially investigation and treatment. But the classic symptoms of tight chest pain associated with feeling sick, particularly when you're sweating, that could easily be so-called cardiac chest pain, and that should instigate uh, you know, uh, seeking medical attention and medical review. So the, the cardiac chest pain, the, the number one cause is what we call coronary disease. So the coronary arteries are the separate arteries that supply the heart muscle with its own blood supply. But the heart is a muscle, it's a very powerful, strong muscle, and it needs a lot of blood to support that energy. And when we're at rest, as I am now sitting, the heart is just so-called in second or third gear, it doesn't need to do very much. When I'm exercising or running, the heart has to do a lot, much, a lot more work. Now, coronary disease develops when there are narrowings or blockages in the arteries around the heart. You can imagine if I start running, if there's a narrowed or blocked artery, then that bit of the heart muscle just can't get enough blood supply. The heart doesn't like that and you get chest pain, potentially breathlessness and potentially nausea as well. Um, so that is the, 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 the kind of archetypal cause of cardiac chest pain. But actually any structural problem with the heart can in theory cause chest pain. A narrowed valve, for example, that puts extra strain on the heart muscle, that can cause chest pain. If a patient has very high blood pressure, then what that means is the heart is having to work often much harder, sometimes twice as hard to push blood out into the body at high blood pressure. That can overstrain the heart and that can cause cardiac chest pain as well. 
So the symptom is important. It's my job as a doctor to kind of find the underlying causes, make a diagnosis, potentially treat and reverse those. The first thing is to make a diagnosis. Um, what is the cause of the chest pain? Only then really can you give you know, patient specific options and treatments. We need to look for immediate reversible causes and we need to make a diagnosis as to whether there is a fundamental problem with the heart and its blood supply. Um, we will start by doing just a simple ECG and some blood tests, and then we may move on to perform so-called stress investigations. Um, if you have a completely normal ECG, that almost certainly guarantees that you have not had a heart attack in the past. That's a very important, that's a very important step. If you have um, abnormal blood tests, such as anemia or low blood count, that in itself can put extra strain on the patient and the heart, and that can precipitate cardiac chest pain, even if the heart is otherwise normal in many other respects. But the most common things that we see in this part of the world is coronary disease. We're looking for evidence of narrowed or blocked arteries. We can look for that in several ways. Um, we need to look, uh, we can either do a, a CT scan that images the heart and indeed images those arteries wrapped around the heart. We can see whether there are narrowings or blockages there, or we do some form of functional so-called stress test where we would ask the patient to walk on a treadmill, looking at the ECG and looking at a cardiac echo, or occasionally do a cardiac MRI scan to do a similar thing. Once we've made the diagnosis, we can start treatment. If I think you've got coronary disease, the first thing is to start medications and tablets that one, reduce your risk of a heart attack, and two, reduce your risk of developing angina or chest pain. So I'd almost certainly start you on a lipid lowering therapy such as a statin and probably would start at a high dose. But also start aspirin. Aspirin doesn't necessarily help with angina or chest pain, but it certainly significantly reduces your risk of a heart attack and to a certain extent stroke. And then there are other medications that are specifically targeted to reduce the likelihood of you getting angina. These tablets work in diverse ways. Some of them lower the blood pressure and cardiac stress. Some of them actually enlarge or dilate the arteries around the heart. And some of them have mixed effects on the, the way that the heart is able to process and use the energy delivered by the uh, blood to the heart muscle. And often patients will need combinations of these tablets to help resolve and improve their symptoms. Unfortunately, it's often possible to reverse or, or, to, or to stop people experiencing regular chest pain. But if they do continue to get chest pain, then often more uh, so-called structural interventional treatments are required. That may be where I do an angiogram, which is taking an X-ray of the arteries around the heart to work out whether it, perhaps balloons and stents can be used to stretch open and reopen the arteries that perhaps are blocked or narrowed. Or even if there are multiple problems, a bypass operation, which is open heart surgery, to provide a new blood supply to the heart and to help the patient get through with fewer symptoms. So there's a whole spectrum starting some very simple tests, and very simple medications to much more complicated tests and treatments that require you know, stages of, of visits to the doctor and you know, careful counselling from both cardiologists like myself and potentially surgeons as well. This is a really important point. And I have to say that most of the patients I see don't have cardiac chest pain. And it's always nice to tell people that, you know, your heart's fine and, and it's actually doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Part of that is just meeting the patient and working out their risk factors. It's much more likely that an 80 year old patient who has smoked, who has high blood pressure, is likely to be experiencing cardiac chest pain compared to a fit 25 year old who's suddenly got you know, a sharp focal pain in the center of the chest. So your underlying probability of heart pain or chest pain depends on your age, your gender, your risk factors. That would include blood pressure, cigarette smoking, diabetes, lipids, family history, to a certain extent, lifestyle. All of these very simple questions, you know, I would ask you in the first five minutes of meeting you, uh, and you know, that determines my likelihood of worrying whether this is specific cardiac chest pain or not. I tend to investigate the younger patients with a CT scan. 
that really nails down exactly whether there are narrowings or blockages in the arteries and heart. And if that CT scan shows that the arteries are clean, there are no narrowings, then almost at the first visit, I'm happy to tell that patient this is not cardiac chest pain. They don't need to take medical therapy. And very often they don't necessarily need to see me again. Sometimes the CT will explain why they've had chest pain. We can sometimes see evidence of inflammation in the lungs and the scarring in and around the lungs that may have indicated recent infection. Sometimes we see things like hiatus hernias that can be specifically treated with antacids. If you have uh, cardiac chest pain, then there will be a whole train of potentially medical treatments and important other tests that are required to determine whether you need significant intervention, such as invasive angiography, stents, bypass surgery, that sort of thing. So nailing down whether a patient has non-cardiac chest pain is really, really important. Sometimes you can do that just by talking to the patient, taking the history, doing a physical exam and seeing that the ECG is normal. Often it does require a test. And I think the evidence at the moment would suggest that doing a CT scan is probably the most efficient way to tell young low risk patients that they don't have heart pain or cardiac chest pain. If a patient's at higher risk, then a different set of tests is required to examine how their heart responds to physiological stress and often then taking it forward with, with invasive tests is required. So actually the first visit where you meet an experienced cardiologist like myself is probably the most important moment where we determine whether it's likely to be heart pain or unlikely to be heart pain. That's a great question. I, I think you know, standard medical advice would be if you have severe chest pain that lasts for 10 minutes and it doesn't go away when you've sat down and rested and uh, stopped whatever you were doing, then that could be a heart attack and you should seek medical attention. And if you have typical chest pain, left chest and it's pressing and you feel sweaty and unwell, you should dial 999. Don't wait for your GP. Don't phone a friend. Just call an ambulance because that could be a heart attack. And unfortunately, in the last two or three years, because of distractions from COVID and things, people are not seeking medical attention. I'm seeing a lot of people in hospital coming in who've not reacted to patients that were a heart attack. On the other hand, most chest pain is non-cardiac. If you have sharp, single bits of chest pain that you can identify with a finger, it gets worse if you take a deep breath, or it's worse if you move your shoulder or you move in a position that's less likely to be serious. Uh, it's probably due to chest wall or so-called musculoskeletal pain. You can just take simple analgesia such as paracetamol or even a short course of um, anti-inflammatories and it is likely to go away. Any pain that worries you, that persists, that you can't easily explain, I would suggest you should do seek medical attention. It's likely to be normal. It's likely to be non-cardiac, but, but some pains that appear to be so-called unlikely to be cardiac chest pain can turn out to be it. So don't ignore symptoms, mention them to your GP. Often not much more than that is required, but often a simple ECG, a conversation with an experienced doctor can reassure you and reassure us that there's no serious problem going on. But certainly my final message is if you have 10 minutes of very severe chest pain, you should call an ambulance.